wasn't how we planned to host the events, um, this event. But um, as we've learned this last two years, it's to anticipate the unexpected. So welcome to our 2021 Annual Business Awards, where we celebrate the successes of our cooperative businesses and leaders that have made an impact over the past year. Before I begin, I'd like to welcome Tiaki Hunuya, Pohere Māori Director, Inclusion and Māori Strategy at Fonterra, who will welcome you all here today um, to our virtual ceremony with a karakia. Thank you, Tiaki. Tēnā kui Rose and tēnā tātou katoa. Like Rose, I'd like to echo the words of welcome to everyone to the Annual Business Awards this evening. And in accordance with our customs, we always start off important way like this with karakia. Karakia is really about grounding everyone. It's about an acknowledgement of point in time and people. And what I'd like to do is to share our Fonterra karakia haia teata with you all. So haia teata talks about the dawning of a new day. It's a message of hope and optimism something I think which is really important at this point in time. So me noi tahi tata. Haia te ata, ka hapara te ata, ko te ata nui, ka horaina. He pō, he pō, he ao ka awatea. Haumi e, hui e, taiki e. Tēnā tata katoa. Back to you, Ros. Thanks, Tiaki. Really appreciate that and um, look forward to the celebrations. For those of you who haven't met me, my name's Ros Henry. I'm the CEO of Cooperative Business New Zealand and have had the pleasure of being on this role for the past two and a half years. I've had um, thoroughly enjoyed working alongside our governors and executives and your members. As most of you know, I'm passionate about your businesses and ensuring your businesses are better understood and supported. If you attended the 2020 awards, you'll remember that it was at the Transitional Cathedral in Christchurch. I said at the time that the venue was somewhat poetic, given the parallels of the business to the cooperative business model. The cathedral came about as a result of adversity and it's built from sustainable materials to minimize the impact on the environment. This building was initially created to be used for a two year period, but 10 years later, it still stands today. Not only that, it has become a significant landmark and a key connector for the community as they've navigated periods of adversity. Sustainability, community focused, connected, resilient, all features of the enduring cooperative business model and so critical today as we work through COVID. These are all traits of your businesses and gives me the passion I have to see you all succeed. These awards are a fantastic way to recognise the great work that you and your businesses do to support the um, lives and livelihoods of New Zealanders. And before we start, there are a few people we do need to thank for their support, which has allowed us to go ahead with this event. Um, our corporate associate members have continued to sponsor the awards, Anderson Lloyd and LBMX. Thank you so much again. Our independent judging panel, Lisa Callagher from University of Auckland, Phil McKendry from EA Networks, and Alistair Herkus from Buttle Finlay. Thank you so much for continuing to be our judging panel and putting so much time and effort into um, this year. In particular, we've had such significant competition, so your input is truly appreciated. Of course, our board, Christine Burr, Greg Gent, Lisa Murray, Andy Grant, Nicholas Shadbolt, Matthew Washington, Mike Brown, and Stefan Asparty. These individuals put in a huge amount of effort uh, and personal time to support you, and without them, we wouldn't be able to have the impact that we have. So again, thank you. I'd also like to thank the team that works tirelessly behind the scenes, um, and they're, they're my core team. So Claire Brooks will be known to a number of you, as well as Kelsey Rowe, and um, our newest member, Anna Younger. Without you, we wouldn't be able to deliver the um, wide range of initiatives that we have this past year. And these, this team has been having to constantly adapt to what's been going on. So thank you on behalf of our members and in particular, thank you to, for looking after me. It really is hugely appreciated. And finally, and most importantly to you, our members, without your ongoing commitment and support, we would have ceased to exist in particular, those of you who have made donations to our organisation over the past um, 12 months, a massive thank you. It is really much appreciated. 
So without further ado, let's get going with the awards. Um, as I say, the calibre of nominees is exceptional this year, and it's clear that New Zealand's member-owned businesses are at the forefront of innovation and continuing to contrib contribute so much to our country and economy, our communities and our people. This made our judges' task incredibly challenging. So let's get on with the show. It's a pleasure to begin the awards this evening by presenting one of our two Enduring Services Awards that we're going to be announcing. The first is to Fonterra. I'm sure no big introductions needed for Fonterra and the impact that the cooperative has had on New Zealand's agricultural and cooperative sector. Last year, the cooperative celebrated 150 years since their founding cooperative was formed. This was the way, by way of formation of New Zealand's first recorded producer cooperative. It was the Otago Cooperative Cheese Company, which was begun by John Matheson, based out of Springfield Farm in Otago Peninsula, and that was on the 22nd of August, 1871. This pioneering cooperative is part of what we now know today as Fonterra. With those eight individuals in 1871 setting the wheels in motion, it's an honour to be here today presenting 150 years of enduring service to the Fonterra team. In recent years, with Miles Harrell at the helm, we've seen Fonterra's leadership team reignite the strong engagement with their shareholders. They, they are committed to ensuring farming in New Zealand continues for generations and, and are doing all that they can to ensure that the way that we farm is about regeneration and, the, and looking after the farm and the environment. The new capital structure which Fonterra farmers have voted for has the potential to bring the back business closer back closer to its cooperative principles, making it easier for farmers to join and stay in the co-op. Together, Fonterra has been creating good across New Zealand for 150 years. This Enduring Service Award is an attest to the fact that this cooperative is truly intergenerational, thriving and a sustainable business, and it's only going to continue. Congratulations, Fonterra. I'd like to invite Miles Harrell, CEO, to accept the award on behalf of Fonterra and say a few words. Well, great. Thank you, Ros, and uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of our 20,000 employees and 9,000 shareholders uh, to the Cooperative Business New Zealand for the award. I mean, you've, you've touched on a few points there. Clearly, 150 years old as a, as a, as a business last year. Uh, we've got a hundred ahead of us course and by doing that you've got to make sure you've got the right people the right strategy uh, in place and to go about the changes we have in the last couple of years to set us up for the next 150 years is something that I'm really proud of and to be recognized by the Centurion Award uh, today is something that, that makes me really pleased so thank you very much on behalf of all of us and I uh, look forward to seeing the rest of the awards over this evening. Thanks so much Miles really appreciate it and congratulations to Fonterra I have to say it's been an absolute honour working with yourself and your team um, during my tenure here. And it's an honour to have you as a member as we celebrate this significant milestone with you. Congratulations. Thank you. We now move to the presentation of the 2021 Cooperative Business of the Year Award. I'd like to invite judging panel member Alistair Herkus to present the award. Alistair is a partner at Buttle Finlay, one of our corporate associate members. He's been a, been a member on the judging panel for the past four years, which has been hugely valuable for us as an organisation. Over to you, Alistair. Thanks a lot, Roz. So this is the business of the year category. In this category, the judging panel looked at the cooperative that showed a true spirit of cooperative principles through making a significant and positive impact within the cooperative community, returning benefits to members and to their local communities. And we looked at the 2021 period. We obviously took into account that we're in year two of the pandemic and that would have affected how these organizations would operate. We were really impressed by the nominations and how they dealt with that and, and continuing to support their members and their communities. However, um, just as with last year's awards, we're mindful that this award is broader than um, responding to the pandemic. And so we tried to look at the businesses as a whole. So this year, the finalists in the Business of the Year category were Balance Agronutrient, FMG, MG Marketing, 
and NZPM, New Zealand Plumbers Merchant. And the winner, I'm really pleased to announce, is NZPM. So, a bit about NZPM. There are two main operating business, Plumbing World and Metrix Imports. They had a really strong growth and a resilient and sustainable performance over the year. What stood out for them was the evidence of walking the talk of all seven Rochdale cooperative principles and the initiatives and projects they'd worked on to support this. So for example, they had a really strong membership growth of 5.8%. They had a gross rebate of 8%, allowing the cooperative to pay a good share of profit to their shareholders while managing their future commitments to growth. They progressed investments for sourcing plumbing products from Asia, which secured some long-term supply while also enabling them to influence key ethical and sustainable purchasing behaviors. What did impress the judging panel amongst many aspects of their uh, nomination was uh, some of their ethical and sustainable initiatives. They have a social responsibility plan initiative which got underway strongly. They've got benchmarks for improving their carbon emissions, product labeling, recycling and packing. Part of this is involved including members and staff to buy in and stay informed about these initiatives, allowing everyone in the team to contribute. NZPM also actively engaged with education and training opportunities, and a real standout for them was their support for women in the industry through, through the National Association of Women in Construction Heal and Steel events held at five of their branches. Great phrase that. NZPM was active in the community and their shareholders raised well over $30,000 for numerous funding, fundraising efforts. Look, they also have a view to the future and giving back to the plumbing industry as a whole. So they nurture it with various activities such as the Young Plumbers Club, which focuses on upskilling and engaging the next generation. So it's really clear through all of their initiatives that it is a living and breathing cooperative. Their activity over the last year has put them in good stead for the future. So once again, congratulations, NZPM. Thank you. Thanks, Alistair. And um, yeah, as um, Alistair said, congratulations, NZPM. It's been an absolute pleasure working with um, the organisation over the past few years. And I have to say, um, well done to John DiBernardo and Rob Kidd for all your hard work. So um, everyone watching, give it up for NZPM, our Cooperative Business of the Year 2021. Our next award this evening is Cooperative Leader of the Year. I'll now invite judging panel member Phil McKendry to present the award. Phil is the chairman of EA Networks and was chair of Rural Co and executive chair of Bahu Chertsey Irrigation. He's been on our judging panel for the past four years um, so we very much appreciate his time and efforts. So over to you, Phil. Thanks, Roz. Every year we say that the leader of the year is the most challenging category, and this year was no different. The leaders you find in the cooperative sector are second to none. The judging panel has looked for a clear demonstration of vision and courage for the cooperative model. A range of successful initiatives that have benefited the cooperative in the sector, an ongoing commitment to our cooperative principles. This year, the nominations covered a range of sectors and cooperative sizes, and all our finalists have demonstrated outstanding leadership in 2021. The finalists for the 2021 Cooperative Leader of the Year Award are Rob Kidd, CEO of NZPM, Wayne McNee, CEO of LIC, Nicola Devine, General Manager of Interflora, and Ruth Newstub, Chief People Officer of Farmlands. And the winner of the 2021 Cooperative Leader Award is Wayne McNee. Just a bit about Wayne. He joined LIC in 2013, and across his tenure facilitated a significant amount of positive change leading the business transformation into a modern, progressive cooperative. He consistently championed the need for their strategy to be grounded in actual measurable outcomes 
for their, th their farmer shareholders. During his tenure, LIC's strategy evolved twice to ensure shareholders are at its heart. The shift away from the sole revenue focus of the past. Wayne was integral in driving these refinements. He delivered on his promises to farmer shareholders about the benefits of the company's transformation and in 2021 reported yet another strong financial result for shareholders for the fourth consecutive year. He drove many initiatives throughout the year which contributed to the strong financial position, including the automation of herd testing laboratories and the implementation of new advanced DNA technology. In addition to being accountable to LIC's 10,000 plus shareholders, Wayne led a team of over 800 staff. Chair Murray King said of Wayne, it's a completely different organization to when he started. LIC's transformation was significant and it required the appropriate people to implement it. Wayne did just that exceptionally well. Wayne exited the business in November 2021. Murray said, Wayne left LIC in really good shape and in good heart. It's a good time to transition because the cooperative has no real issues. And that is a testament to Wayne's leadership. Congratulations, Wayne. Thanks, Phil. Um, and congratulations to Wayne. That's fantastic news. And let's hear a virtual round of applause for our Cooperative Business Leader of the Year for 2021. Um, Wayne will be sending out your award to you shortly. And um, yeah, congratulations. That's fantastic. I'd like to now present our second Enduring Service Award for the evening. This award goes to one of our newest members, Medical Assurance Society, for their 100 years of service. They celebrated this fantastic milestone in March last year. Founded in 1921 by four doctors in Napier, just as New Zealand emerged from World War I in the Spanish flu pandemic, which is rather uncanny given where we are right now, it's rather fitting that we're now celebrating their 100 years in the midst of another pandemic. Starting out as a way of helping medical professionals take care of themselves and their families, the business has evolved into a thriving mutual, one of only two mutual insurers left in New Zealand. While doctors and other medical professionals are still at the core, MAS now also welcomes New Zealanders from all professions, as well as those who align to their broader aspirations for a healthier New Zealand, including myself. The past two years has brought health and wellbeing even further to the forefront of New Zealanders' minds, MAS has continued to support their 40,000 plus members and still seeing 9% membership growth, as well as investing in the community and the overall health of New Zealand. As you would expect from a business set up by doctors, MAS is all about serving their community. To have reached 100 years and counting, there is no doubt they are excelling in this. As they often describe themselves, they're here for good. We couldn't, see, couldn't agree more and are honoured to present them with this Enduring Service Award. Congratulations, Maz. I'd now like to invite Harley Ayish, Chair, to accept the award on behalf of Maz and say a few will, words. Thanks, Harley. Kia ora and uh, thanks, Ros, for those kind words. It's an honour to receive the Enduring Service Award this evening on behalf of the Maz organisation and its professional members. For those who haven't heard of MAS, we provide general business risk and life insurance, as well as KiwiSaver investment schemes to our growing membership. To be thriving after 100 years is a tribute to the hard work and commitment of previous generations of the organization. We strive to be connected and relevant to our members and our community. We look forward to providing value to our members, their whanau and their communities while adapting to the big challenges facing us all. We're here for good. Again, thank you for this award, Kia Thank you, Harley, and congratulations to Maz. We're delighted to have you as a member and witness the positive impact that you're making on the New Zealand community and in New Zealand over the past 100 years. In 2020, we introduced a new award category which celebrated both emerging leaders and emerging businesses. We had such a fantastic response to this that for 2021, we actually decided to separate the two awards 
And so we now have the Emerging Leader of the Year and the Emerging Business of the Year which um, celebrates uh, cooperative startups. We'll now present the Emerging Business of the Year, and I'd like to invite Alistair back again to um, present the award, Alistair. Thanks a lot, Roz. So the Emerging Business of the Year category was created to recognize an emerging cooperative, which has been in operation as a cooperative for five years or less. It, seeks to celebrate the work they're doing to ensure long-term success, viability, and acting in terms of cooperative principles and ideals. Over the past few years especially, there's been an influx of new groups of um, people looking to establish cooperatives, uh, particularly as the awareness and understanding of the business model continues to expand. We're really pleased to see a high number of high caliber nominations come through and to see how tenacious these businesses are being in attracting and retaining members, just at the same time as they navigate along with the rest of us, the pandemic. So we narrowed the nominations down to two finalists, and they were the New Zealand Cleaning Cooperative and ProCare. So I'm really pleased to announce that the winner of the 2021 Emerging Business of the Year Award is ProCare. So ProCare, what is ProCare? It is the largest and most diverse group of healthcare professionals in New Zealand. It represents more than 170 general practices across the greater Auckland region with over 800,000 enrolled patients. Cooperative as a business, is, ProCare as a business, I should say, has been um, operating from the 1990s. However, 2019, so ProCare formally become a cooperative. What sort of stood out in their winning nomination was their strong drive behind why to become a cooperative. And since then, the work they've been doing to live those cooperative principles. So the change took about 18 months of consultations and culminated in a 94% shareholder vote of yes, let's do this. So they have moved quickly to bring the cooperative vision to life. The purpose, or one of the purposes, has been to enable uh, general practices and, uh, and general, uh, general practitioners to own more easily medical practices. And so that's a key purpose and a key, key success factor that they're working on. They've embodied collaboration with other cooperatives very early in partnership for one of the other, another member of the Cooperative Business New Zealand, that is Southern Cross Health Society, they've launched a new delivery model of primary healthcare, being Care HQ, virtual healthcare services. Over the past year, the new cooperative has delivered a new set of services for their members. So this includes Employment Plus, which is a dedicated HR service, supporting practices with recruitment expertise. They provide mental health programs through their subsidiary Fresh Minds to assist practice staff in managing their well-being during stressful times. They've got bespoke training solutions for nurses to be supported to join general practices. And that was a, an initiative which came off the back of member feedback in particular. They've also been able to deliver returns to their network members at a time when they needed it most to provide service to the community. So ProCare's work in transforming into a cooperative has allowed their practices to thrive and even better serve their patients and communities. Fantastic stuff, congratulations ProCare. Thanks Alistair and a big congratulations to ProCare. I'm sure Harley Ayish um, will be well pleased with the outcome along with Lindy Norwell and the team. So that's awesome news, um, obviously. There's a lot of changes going on with the DHBs right now and um, ProCare, we're um, behind you all the way in terms of continuing on your journey of being a cooperative and delivering value to the communities that you're based in. So um, you play a very critical piece of the puzzle in the healthcare sector and I'm sure you will continue to do so. So um, take care as we work through this um, pandemic and congratulations again. Our next award this evening is the Emerging Leader of the Year. I'll now invite judging panel member Phil McKendry back to announce the winner. Over to you, Phil. 
Thanks, Roz. The Emerging Leader of the Year Award allows us to recognise those individuals making their mark on their cooperative in the sector. It supports succession planning to enable the cooperative community continue to thrive here in New Zealand. We were pleased to see such high quality nominations from young leaders who are excelling in their positions. The finalists for the 2021 Emerging Leader of the Year Award are Ben Ross, Branch Manager, Wellington at MG Marketing. Angus Dowson, Science Extension Officer, Technology and Solutions at Balance Agri-Nutrients. And Emma Hinton, Head of Business Development at Farmlands. And the winner of a 2021 Emerging Leader of the Year Award is Ben Ross. A bit about Ben. Ben lives and breathes MG Marketing having joined their cooperative part-time as a high school student in, 20, in 2008. Since then, he's been on the fast track of leadership, progressing quickly through to a senior sales role, then the key account manager position, before being accelerated into the leadership position at MG Wellington branch in 2019. He is currently MG's youngest branch manager across all nine branches but age doesn't mean a thing in terms of results. In the 2021 year, as Wellington Branch recorded the best private financial result in its 97 year history. And he leads a team of 59 employees with ease. A standout for Ben is how he shaped the way his branch achieves targets, recognizing that the traditional approach of just selling more produce wasn't going to make much significant impact or achieve the best outcome for grower members. Ben, implemented, ben implemented an innovative communi communication style, which allowed his staff to feedback and take part in monthly workshops. This resulted in continuous improvement across grower member engagement, customer service and efficiency. His work in this area has shifted thinking to one of shared responsibility and ultimately resulted in growth and greater market share. Ben has also put significant work into advocacy efforts with members and taking the lead in a strategy to raise the profile of grower members. An example being his work in connecting grower member Woodhaven Gardens with Foodstuffs Pack and Save helping drive mutually beneficial marketing initiatives. As Al Tappan, Ben's nominated for this category stated, Ben is a motivated and talented emerging leader who is passionate about the horticulture industry. He would be a worthy winner of this award. We couldn't agree more. Congratulations, Ben. Thanks, Phil, and congratulations, Ben. It is so wonderful to see the amazing talent coming through our cooperative community. So um, you've set the bar high and uh, we look forward to next year's. Um, so MG Marketing and the cooperative community, we're lucky to have you and we look forward to um, you sharing that award with your um, working um, crew. Congratulations. Our final award for the evening is the Outstanding Contribution to Cooperatives. I'd like to hand over the presentation of the award to Christine Burr, our Chair of Cooperative Business New Zealand. Christine's also the General Manager of Share Compliance for Fonterra. So welcome, Christine. Thanks very much, Roz. The Outstanding Cooperative Contribution Award recognises individuals who over a long term have contributed significantly to the success of the cooperative model for Cooperative Business New Zealand member organisations or to the wider cooperative sector. While nominees were required to have over 10 years service to the sector, this award is not only about recognising long service, it's also about recognising the significant contribution the finalists have made to the developing and cooperative business model and sector. These individuals are high calibre leaders and cooperative champions. And it was difficult for our judging panel to make a decision. The finalists of the 2021 
outstanding contribution to cooperative wards are. Warak Kato, Science Strategy Manager for Balanced Agri-Nutrients. Gordon Gastry, Retired CEO of EA Networks. And Graham Sutton, Chair of Provoco. And the winner of the 2021 Outstanding Contribution of Corporate Awards is Graham Sutton. Congratulations, Graham. Graham has a long history of working with cooperative model to advance the position of farmers. Currently, he is chair of Prof. Cole. Graham was nominated by the general manager, Ross Chambers, for not only his role at Prof. Cole, but the significant work in the sector for over the past two decades. Graham's first directorship was at Ravensdown in 1987, and since then, he has served on boards for seven different pharma cooperatives. The exception was Network Tasman, but even then his appointment was to represent the rural sector. And it goes without saying that cooperatives in the rural sector are intrinsically linked. As Ross stated in his nomination, Graham has a keen understanding of the need to articulate a vision and take people with him to achieve positive outcomes. He has always sought long-term benefits for the business and community organisations he has been involved in. Congratulations, Graham. This is a well-deserved recognition. And unfortunately, we are here on a video call rather than in person celebrating your success. But nonetheless, this is an amazing achievement. So congratulations. Back to you, Roz. Thanks, Christine. Um, it's fantastic to have individuals such as Graham uh, within our cooperative community. I know for myself personally, working with Graham, he's been a huge stalwart and um, fantastic supporter of the work that we do. So it's very much appreciated. And um, yeah, you know, to have that level of service going over such an extended period of time, it's wonderful. So thanks again. What a fantastic array of finalists and such a difficult job for our judges to select individuals amongst so many worthy nominations. Congratulations to you all. It's a privilege for Cooperative Business New Zealand to host these awards and see their continuing growth year on year. I'd just like to say a huge thank you again to our sponsors for this event, Anderson Lloyd and LBMX. Um, without you, this couldn't have been put on. We will be sending out the trophies to our winners and look forward to showcasing the importance of your businesses to multiple audiences across New Zealand. Um, please share with us any celebrations you may have with your teams. I'd just like to take the opportunity to say Cooperative Business New Zealand is only able to operate through our, through our member support. The an analogy I like to use is a gym membership. You only get out what you put in, so please get to that gym. I'd also like to say, um, you know, make sure you use our services, get your executive directors and members to join us at our various professional development and events, participate in the discussions with Wellington. We are focused on providing professional service, whether that be face-to-face -face or in a virtual world. As a cooperative, the spirit of collaboration is key to your success. As your representative body, it allows us to maximise value to yourselves. Many of you already offer your facilities and events and training staff to support delivery of initiatives and engagement with regulators, ministers on key mess messaging. Please know that each, we appreciate this assistance. We welcome any such offers to enable delivery on our key core um, initiatives. There are opportunities to work alongside our newly appointed board who with their joint knowledge and experience are well placed to support you in adding significant value to the sector. To take the opportunity to make use of your membership, we welcome your involvement. Research and education on the sector here in New Zealand is paramount. We recently released the PwC report on the importance of your businesses to the New Zealand economy, and this has greatly assisted us open doors in Wellington, but also getting education into the, on the model into the university sector. However, there is much to be done in this area to ensure your businesses do have the right skills and capability, not only within your business, but for those advising your organisations, along with the decision makers in Wellington and the general public. If you'd like to get involved, we'd value your input. So in wrapping up, congratulations to all of our nominees and winners. It's a great achievement to be part of this audience. 
and thank you again for joining us. We wish everyone well over the coming months ahead. If we are able to assist, please do get in contact. Kia kaha.